Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. First of all, you've probably noticed that I uh, am not Jesse, actually. Nope. Jesse is in the UK and will return soon. In the meantime, I, Elspeth, am happy to be here to give you your daily dose of gaming news. And speaking of kingdoms, today we got our first in-depth look at gameplay from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The presentation was led by A.G. Aonuma, producer of The Legend of Zelda series, and holy moly does it look amazing. I mean, it really looks beautiful. Traversal on and off the Sky Islands is utterly seamless. No loading times, no nothing. These new locations also come with their own flora, fauna, and unique enemies called constructs, which are giving me major Twilight Princess vibes. I mean, they really do look like that time period of Zelda, which, oh, I just adore it so much. I'm also getting a little bit of kind of that open mystery of Wind Waker that kind of leads to a lot of that exploration. It's just beautiful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, the most important reveal in Tears of the Kingdom was that it introduces a Korok with a backpack. I mean, look at this little guy. I've got to help him. I'm sorry, Zelda, but this little dude takes precedence. Tears of the Kingdom will also introduce four new abilities for our boy Link. Recall, Fuse, Ultra Hand, and Ascend. These not only provide the player with creative ways to traverse Hyrule, but also allow you to get creative with the world around you, which is really neat. I'm definitely a fan of the super long pitchfork. I mean, that's gonna work anywhere. Super long pitch, that's just a javelin, basically. I can't wait to create a ton of insane and super powerful weapons out of the objects that I find. Speaking of weapons, weapon degradation is back and in full force. Now, as some of you may or may not know, I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. I got to voice in a in a Legend of Zelda game, Cadence of Hyrule, very exciting stuff. I just look at my back wall. I mean, I got Skull Kid everywhere. But a major issue that I had with Breath of the Wild was its weapon degradation. I felt that it was a mechanic that they introduced just to keep you held back from being the most powerful thing in its universe, which I understand it lends itself to exploration and learning about the game. But it really did feel like, man, I just was getting good. I was just getting good and my weapon broke. And now I'm now I'm Captain Sadpants. Overall, it looks like not a ton has changed from Breath of the Wilds. Um, and I get it, you know, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unless it's in uh, Tears of the Kingdom, in which case it probably will break because, you know, weapon degradation. But all of these locations and abilities have me incredibly hyped for this. It looks so gosh darn gorgeous and inventive and inspired. Uh, and man, I, I just can't wait. I can't wait to start creatively crafting my way across Hyrule. In other news, yesterday Ubisoft officially pulled out of E3 2023. Just last month, Ubisoft was the only company confirmed to be attending the revamped Electronic Entertainment Expo. But as of this week, that is no more. In a statement made to Video Games Chronicle, a Ubisoft spokesperson shared, quote, while we initially intended to have an official E3 presence, we've made the subsequent decision to move in a different direction and we'll be holding a Ubisoft Forward Live event on the 12th of June in Los Angeles. We look forward to sharing more details with our players very soon, end quote. So yes, just like Microsoft, Ubisoft will have a presence in LA this June via their own gaming event. Look, we've all been there. We've committed to an event before where you know who who else is attending? And then you find out none of your friends are going. So you back out. I get it. But it begs the question, who is going to be exhibiting at E3? Like right now, no major publishers are confirmed for the event. And we are just about two and a half months away. And that is that is bizarre to me as an adult. I remember thinking as a kid, like, man, E3 is the be all and end all if you want to get anywhere in the gaming industry. And now it seems like it's lost a little bit of that luster. Maybe it's because there are so many other cons and things to attend, but I wonder, what do y'all think? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Let me know. And hey, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And while you're here, feel free to check out my channel, twitch.tv slash Elspeth, where I do even more streaming and voiceover junk on camera. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with more 5-Minute Gaming News.